everyone. Thanks again for joining me for a 3D Thursday project. This one is a little tote basket that I found courtesy of Rachel Tessman, another fellow Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Uh, she did one cute ones for Easter and I wanted to do something like that as well with some uh, DSP that's going away, but yet one of my favorite uh, stamp sets here is the uh, Celebrate Sunflowers. Alrighty, so let me give you a little close up of what that looks like. So you're gonna start, to start, all you need is a six by six piece of designer series paper. You're gonna need some brads and you're gonna need some tear and tape or some other sort of uh, really strong adhesive. So you could use Seal Plus or you could use our tear and tape. And then you're gonna need whatever you want for decoration, um, you know, belly band, whatever you're gonna be doing to the basket. You're gonna want your stamps, dies, etc., to make that piece right there. All right, so let me set that off to the side and let's get started. So like I said, the first thing you wanna do is grab a six by six piece of designer series paper and then take it into your scoring tool, score it at three eighths of an inch, then at one and one eighth inch. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut three quarters of an inch, another three quarters of an inch, and that should leave you with a four and a half piece, four and a half inches wide piece by the six inches, okay? So I have done that already with my piece that I've cut from uh, Beauty of the Earth. There we go, Beauty of the Earth Designer Series paper. So I scored it three eighths and it went in an eighth, and then I cut off three quarters, three quarters, and then here's the piece that I have left, which is my four and a half by six. And by six. All right, these two pieces you can just set aside for now. They're gonna become our basket handles, and we don't need to have them uh, quite yet because we're gonna make the actual shape of the basket first. Okay, now there's a lot of sc scoring elements to this part right here. So pay close attention. I will have this, uh, the directions for this into the description of the video as well. Uh, but if you follow this along, hopefully this will help you uh, get the right measurements. So the first score line you're gonna do is at three eighths of an inch, and you're gonna be scoring along the short side, or I should, well, along the long side, short side is on the left or the right there, okay? That makes sense? So your first score line is at three and an eighth, then two and three eighths, then three inches, then three and five eighths, and finally five and five eighths. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that first. So grab your scoring tool. I'm gonna have, I'm using my Stampin' Trimmer. All right, so one, two, three and three eighths of an inch is your first one. And because you're using designer series paper, remember don't press too hard. You're gonna want, um, you don't wanna cut all the way through. So two, one, two, two and three eighths inches. And then three, whoop, and then three and five eighths, four or five, and finally five and five eighths, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so basically what you've done is you've scored in three eighths, and then another two and three eighths from each side, and then three inches in the center. That's another way to think of it as well. All right, so this little part in the middle here is gonna be gusseted. That's gonna develop or make up for the bottom. Now you wanna put a couple other little score lines in and if you look closely, you don't wanna put them all the way through. So you're gonna put this back into your trimmer, turn to the, this direction, and you're only gonna score from here to here, five eighths inch in. So, whoops. <laughs> so this is the, uh, the two and three eighths, three, three and five eighths. So in that little area right there, five and eighths of an inch in from both sides. Okay, if you're using the trimmer, that's really easy to do because you can see in this guideline where that's going to be. Okay, so first I'm going to put it over to my five inch line. Four and five. There we go. Now when you lay this down, you should be able to see this is where the scoring tool start, the, the piece of the scoring tool that actually starts the cut or the, the line starts is right along the center here. So you want to make this line up set with the creases that you've already made so right there to right there you should be able to see those lining up okay there's a little line here you can follow and there's the little nub on top that should hopefully help guide you okay then I'm gonna flip that around and do that the other way and I apologize if my head gets in this in the way because I want to make sure I'm looking at the right spaces okay alrighty now I've got my 5 eighths inch scored from both sides 
All right, now we're not gonna trim off any pieces, but we do need to make some cuts on those lines that we just scored. So we're gonna go back the other direction and I'm gonna fold this up a little bit so I can see where I'm going. Okay, so there you can see, those are the, the little lines that make that little pleat. So I wanna cut this one and the center and this one, but only up to that 5 8 inch score line that we made, okay? And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. So if it helps, you can go ahead and bend that 5 8 line as well. And depend, if you're using a lighter colored dark uh, of DSP, this is a lot easier to see. So as you can tell, it's not quite as easy on my darker paper. You know what, my score at 5 8 didn't quite go deep enough, so I'm gonna go do it again. I wanna make sure I can really see what I'm doing there. Okay, so back to that. Okay. Oh yeah, that's much better. Now I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna give this a score all the way across. And this one too, so I can see where my lines are more definitively. All right, so I'm gonna cut up to that 5 8 score line. And once again there, and then you've got that half at the three inches. Okay, so that is about the most complicated portion of the whole thing. Now what I would like to do now is go ahead and I'm gonna take those pieces. Again, this is gonna be my bottom. So you're gonna want an accordion fold. So it kind of looks now like an M, okay? We're also going to fold down the top of each side. And I'm gonna go ahead and give that a really nice crease with my bone folder just on that little 3 8 inch line from before, okay? Now this eventually, we see where we're going here, these two are gonna tuck up inside and these guys are gonna wrap together to make the sides of the basket. Now this would be a good time to check and see if these actually ended up the same size. You can see one of my sides is a little bit longer, so I'm gonna end up tucking that under and making them meet. Okay, so I'm gonna want adhesive on this side because this is the side that's gonna go over. And don't worry about tucking, or you don't wanna adhere this piece down, it'll get held by this part over here and it will get held by the brads. But that will give you a little bit more space to have that tuck happen. Okay, so don't go too close to the edge, you want a little bit of that so that that tuck can happen. And I'm just gonna check these sides here as well. And those look pretty good. So I'm just gonna put that on the same side then. Alrighty, leaving a little room. Now these guys are gonna need adhesive also on these little tabs here. So you wanna have it on the side that you would see on the outside, or same pattern you should see on the outside, I should say. Don't take any of the adhesive off yet because we're first gonna put our handles on. So just let that sit off to the side for now once you've got all those little bits of tear and tape on. Okay, I'm gonna leave this off to the side so it's still in visual range in case you need to catch up and see where some of that goes. All right, now go ahead and grab those handles and we put a score line all the way down the middle. So what you wanna do now is do go ahead and fold that in half and if they don't quite match up, you can um, help it along or you can just trim off what's, a little, what's extra. Totally up to you. Um, I am gonna run uh, just some basic adhesive down the middle. These are also gonna get secured with brads and such, and if you just give it a little bit of a burnish, whoops, with your bone folder, that should make sure that those are nice and adhered. And like I said, if it bothers you that that paper's sticking out, just go ahead and trim that down. Okay, then the other thing you wanna do before you start adhering it to your project, we're gonna give this a little curl, just like we would curling ribbon, and that'll help the shape of the handle ease up high, better. And I love the fact that the designer series paper will do that, especially when it's this thin. Um, you can get that, like I said, that nice little curl in there already. Okay, so I'm gonna have that crease, adhesive. Whoops, where did you come from? <laughs> Alrighty, and more with my bone folder. Go ahead and I'm just gonna leave that a little bit, that won't bother me. Okay, and then again, a little bit of a curl. So you're already giving the natural shape to the basket handle. 
Okay, let's go ahead and poke those holes. I'm gonna use my take your pick tool. You wanna have a little something to, to poke into, so have a little mat, <clears throat> either our stamp and pierce mat or some kind of foamy piece. You don't wanna end up going like into your table or anything like that. So I'm gonna use the pokey end of my tool there. And I'm gonna go ahead and let's see here. If you wanna take that to a ruler, you can mark where you want your handles to go. So I'm gonna guess right about there. And then the same distance from the other side, so that's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? So I'm gonna poke, do that marking right about the center, centered this way, and you can do about three or four inches in, totally up to you, depends on how uh, wide you want the handle to be. So if we do it at this mark, this is how tight the handle is going to look. Okay, you want to spread that out a little bit, go a little wider. Okay, so let's make the narrow size for now. I'm going to just measure one more time. One, two, three, four inches, and one, two, three, four inches. Okay, so take that over to whatever piercing mat or whatever you're using, and we're just going to poke the hole there, and there, and there and there okay now we're going to put our handle on and you're going to want the ends of the handles to be to the inside of your basket so first i'm going to add just a tiny bit of adhesive to each end to hope hopefully help hold that in place while i poke the hole for the other one okay this guy wants to curve this way so i'm just going to cover up that little hole where we had it Put it back down and poke from this side. And now I should have a hole that goes all the way through. If not, just enhance it a little bit. You're gonna take your brad from the outside to the inside. Come on, little hole, where are you? There you are. All right, and then just go ahead and open up that brad. And then we're just gonna repeat the same process over here with this handle. Okay, so put that over where the hole is. Make sure that's nice and straight again, and then poke in there. And we'll put that brad through here now. Then again, you're gonna repeat the process on the other side. All right, cat nine brad, there we go. These new brads have such long arms, legs, whatever you would call that, I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, now our basket has our handle on one side. And as you can see, these kind of like to go a little wonky. Um, so if you'd like to have them tacked down with something else, feel free. You could put another piece of really little bit of designer series paper, something back in there. I'm gonna show you how I hid mine and helped mine stay in place uh, in just a second. Okay, so now I'm just gonna repeat the process on the other side. There's my handle and it looks like it wants to curve this way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some adhesive just to keep it in place while I am poking my hole. Okay, now it wants to go this way. All right, there we go. Stay there. <laughs> All right, poke through that one, reinforce if needed. Okay, perfect. Get a little Brad going again. Oop, did I grab the wrong end? I did. <laughs> there we go. It's the problem when all the sides look the same. <laughs> all right, and I know some of this is off camera again, but here we go. You get the idea of what I'm doing is you're making, making holes and I just needed to make sure that I had that in the right place for my visual. There we go. All right, poke a hole again. And Brad goes through. Oh, here, I thought you would be the first one that wanted to stay put. <laughs> All right, and there is our final one. Uh, now, the brads that we have, uh, they come in round or square, black and white, and they get, come in varying sizes. Um, you get a whole big container full. There's 200 pieces total. And like I said, they're round, they're square, they're different sizes. 
and they're great for all kinds of projects like this 3D or any place you want to have a little gusset or uh, something like the overalls, the grommet maybe? That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> okay, now we've got our handles attached. Now we're going to form the sides. So now you can go ahead and remove one side of that. And remember, we were going to tuck this un side under. Now these pieces need to stay to the inside. Now we're going to create, we're going to tuck that under a little bit. Come on. There we go. Oh, it's stuck to my finger. <laughs> that always happens when I'm nervous and on camera. Something is going wonky. Okay, there we go. So go ahead, keep that adhesive helping there, okay? Then you're gonna do the same thing over here. This one I might have a little too close. So you probably can put your adhesive just a little bit to, more to the inside if needed. Okay, same thing, we want our handles to stay out of the way for one. And we want those two little tabby pieces to stay to the inside. I'm gonna tuck one under the other. That'll help create a nice finished edge. And once again, it didn't want to stick to, want to stick to my finger, not to each other. Okay, there we go. Now that we've got that in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm gonna run along that edge. So let me put this up a little bit so you can see. So I'm just gonna run along this edge, but put it down against your table or whatever you're working on. And that'll really just help secure and burnish where that is, okay? All right, so now you have the basic form of your basket. Now remember those little tabs that we had inside there. Now this is a little bit of a tricky part. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead in there now and remove those pieces of, oops, we'll remove the tape off of, there we go. Come on. <laughs> off of the tear and tape. Your take your pick tool helps a lot with this as well. If you can't get your fingers in there, just push against it with that pokey part. And again, because I'm on camera, and nervous, it's gonna give me trouble. There we go, okay? So we got those two off. I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my, I'm gonna take my bone folder in there and then just push against. So we're pressing the tab up and towards the sides, okay? Same thing over here. It's gonna be a little hard to see. Let me see if I can manipulate the camera a little bit. Up and towards the side, okay? And again, you're gonna make, burnish that down against your table or something like that so that it's really nice and secure. Then just go ahead and repeat the side. And I'm sorry that I know that's really hard to see, but hopefully you're getting the idea. So you're gonna take off the, the tape. Come on, there we go. And push with your bone folder so that it touches the sides, okay? That's just a little extra security and it seals off this bottom edge for you. And then you can go ahead and fill them with whatever treat or present or whatever type of thing that you were doing. Um, then remember too, if you want to decorate the outside, you're going to want, you can create a belly band, you can create some kind of focal point image, all kinds of different things that you could be doing to decorate these cute little baskets. They'd be great little party favors, shower favors. Um, if we did them in the right colors, you could do like Valentine treats for your office, you know, your kids, school people, all that kind of great stuff. And now that it looks like a little purse, it can look like little denim overalls. You can have all kinds of ways that you can dress this up. All right. Now I'm going to show you what I did with mine. Um, I did use the label me lovely punch. I cut, I punched a piece out of Bumblebee and that's my main focal point. I stamped and colored in one of the sunflower pieces from the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. So it's just this little guy right down here. I colored in with my blends. I used daffodil and uh, mellow moss, I believe. And I also have some die cut pieces. This has a matching die set. I cut out two of this piece out of Bumblebee and I cut two of this piece out of moss. And what I did was I, I cut off, I didn't use the whole thing. I probably used just a little bit of a tip. And when I did that, I added glue dots to where the brad would be sitting and then tucked that under and had the touch over the brad. So you don't see the brad tips on this side. You only see them on this side. You could absolutely repeat that and decorate both sides. Um, I just chose to do the one. 
And then as far as this goes, this is a way to keep, um, add, add a little more interest of course, but it also helps keep those brads in place and hides a little more of that inside designer series paper if you didn't want that part to show so much. So like I said, I cut two of these and I just took one on each side and I kind of folded it in half, but a little bit offset so that it kind of gives this little fuzzy, or not fuzzy, um, it gives a little art shape, but then they're all kind of offset of each other. So it's got lots of background texture. I went ahead and I put a couple glue dots on each side of this, and then I tucked it inside and up and against where those brads sit. Okay, so that's securing where those brad arms are going to be so that they don't come popping out and twisting up. And that's also going to help keep these handles in place. So I would recommend just putting something across here, whether it's a little piece of paper, some sort of other decoration, just something because as you can see that twists and moves, and then these little guys are going to start poking up and it might, if you're a little OCD like me, that might bother you a little bit. <laughs> so like I said, I added just a little element to hide where those are, keep them insecure, and I'm going to show you the finished project one more time. All right, here we go. So again, my thanks to Rachel Tessman for showing us this tote basket today. Um, this is just, I just love the way that this turned out. I know it's not quite the time for fall, but it does make me think of that with those lovely sunflowers. Like I said, it's late summer. Um, and the wood grain paper from The Beauty of the Earth is really just so pretty. All right, thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, you can find the, all the elements that I used and some more of the directions in the description of the video. And if you have any questions or comments, just pop them into the comment section and I will be happy to answer them for you. Thanks for joining me today for another 3D Thursday. Have a great day.